Welcome to the webinar, Wag More, Worry Less, Seven Tips for a Smooth Recovery. I'm Carla, an admin of the Cruciate Support Group and your webinar host. All right, class, let's do doggy roll call. Bark out some details about your dog in the comments section. Include their name, their surgery type, if you know it, and when their surgery is, and then where in the world you guys call home. If you wanna get some attention, go ahead and post a picture of your dog too. While you do that, I'll move on to the next slide. I'll share some information about myself and my sidekick, Vinny. When I adopted my fur kid, I had no idea that his knee injuries would spark a cranial cruciate crusade and the creation of my brand, Run Again Rover. I remember how I struggled when Vinny was first diagnosed. I didn't want anyone to experience what we did. It was so hard. I became driven to find solutions for other dog owners. I wrote an Amazon best-selling book. I also started a podcast and a YouTube channel that has over 77,000 views. I'll tell you about my best product at the tail end of the webinar. In my quest to learn more about cruciate disease, I observed a live TPLO surgery and three virtual live TPLOs. One of the things I value most is interacting with you all inside the Facebook support groups. Together, the support groups have become a worldwide army of almost 32,000 members. We have dedicated dog owners, veterinary experts, people from respectable veterinary implant companies, vet techs, canine physiotherapists, dog trainers, and canine massage therapists. There is no stopping us. Before digging in, you should know that I am not a veterinary professional. I'm a fellow dog owner with a passion for helping pet parents just like you. I'll guide you with my personal opinions and experiences. When it comes to your dog's health, veterinary instructions should always take the lead. And don't worry, during this webinar, I won't dive into complicated topics like medication or physical therapy. That stuff is best left to the experts. Number one, give yourself grace. Attention perfectionists and DIY superstars. If you're an overachiever type, trust me, you have to hang up your superhero cape when it comes to CCL recovery. Even the most loving dog owners can feel stressed, overwhelmed, and make mistakes. When people expect perfection and then make mistakes, it feels like walking into your high school reunion with a toilet paper streamer stuck to the bottom of your shoe. Slip-ups happen. Forgive yourself. Learn from them and make adjustments so you don't make the same mistake twice. The recovery process will test your perseverance and reaction to a wide range of emotions. Dogs can sense when we become frazzled and it affects their emotional and physical well-being. So when you feel like your emotions are kicking into overdrive, step away, ask for help, and take some deep breaths. It'll benefit you and your dog. Now let's talk about caregiver fatigue. Being fully immersed in caregiving can leave you feeling physically and emotionally drained. Protect yourself from burnout by doing something special just for you. Call that friend who makes you laugh so hard your cheeks hurt. Skip the pizza. Order some delicious takeout. Eat the cake. But whatever you do, be easy on yourself, friends. This one's just to put a smile on your face because during preparation stages and the recovery journey, some days are just going to feel off. Keep the faith. You've got time to get this right. Now, I need to go way old school here. I'm talking like 1700s old school. Benjamin Franklin, the electricity testing kite flyer, once said, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Those are some wise words, and I want you to keep that quote in mind as I go to the next slide. Number two, prepare and train before surgery. You know that preparation is the key to success. And I recommend preparing with three different things, the recovery area, cone collar, and a harness or sling. Let's do the recovery area first. You want this thing to be cozy. If it's large enough for you to get inside and sit with your dog, do it. Read a book, watch TV, give them a toy to calmly play with, nothing that rolls you guys. 
The goal here is to show your furry friend that their recovery area is a safe and happy place to be. Now, the cone collar. Here's what not to do. Putting on a cone collar or inflatable collar and giggling as your pup tries to ninja their way out of it will backfire on you post-op like your grandpa's rusted jalopy. Don't do it. Do this instead. Try some short training sessions, and I mean like three to four minutes. This will help acclimate your dog to the cone collar. Show approval when they accept it without a fuss. It might take multiple tries, but trust me, the payoff is well worth it. What you might want to do is instead of just putting it on your dog, put it next to them. Let them smell it. Brush it against their fur. Leave it out so they can see it. All of these slow kind of, um, uh, these, it's, it's not kind of like in your face, right? It's not like you're just putting it around their neck and expecting them to be okay with it. It's kind of like a gradual training. I think it's much gentler that way. Now we'll talk about how to prep with a sling or harness. For heavy dogs, it's a good idea to have something ready to help them get outside post-op. I've seen many a frantic post from dog owners with 80 plus pound dogs who have no idea how they're going to tackle potty break. So they get home, their dog has to go outside and they're like, I, I don't know what to do. Or they have a, a harness, but they never trained with it or it's not sized. So you want to do all that stuff ahead of time. There are two standout harness brands I recommend. Ginger Lead for the female dogs. They do have a unisex model for males, but it pushes against the male dog's anatomy and you have to have some pretty quick reflexes to remove the sling, let the dog pee, and then get it back under them to get them walking again. That's why for males, I like the help them up harness, okay? you They can pee with the harness on uh, because it doesn't cover their anatomy. Uh, Liz Rubenstein is one of the co-owners of Ginger Lead, and she has been such a great support for me. Uh, she gave me a code for 10% off. If you shop on the gingerlead.com site, you'll go to the checkout and type in run again, Rover, all one word, and that'll give you 10% off your harness. The same thing goes here with the training sessions. You want to do short duration, multiple session training sessions, three to four minutes is about it. Um, you'll do this on a carpeted area inside your house. Why inside? It's because training in a low distraction, predictable area will help you and your dog remain focused. Um, when you start getting the hang of it, then you can go outside. When you're first starting to train with a harness or a sling, don't expect perfection here. You are going to feel so discombobulated. You'll feel like your legs are tangled. <clears throat> tangled. You're stepping over your feet. You're tripping. It's because it's a lot to manage at once. You know, you've got to manage your dog and then your own coordination. So be patient with yourself. Number three, behold brain games and opportunities to take in sights, sounds, and sniffs. Sunshine and fresh air are just good for the soul, aren't they? Restless, bored post-op dogs appreciate a change of scenery. Be careful though. Reactive dogs could spring to their feet for all kinds of reasons. Maybe their favorite person stops by for a visit, or the Amazon truck rolls up, or maybe that neighborhood cat that poops in your garden is making his rounds again. And that's why if your dog is outside post-op, stay by their side and always keep them leashed. Don't be one of those people who foolishly believes their post-op dog won't take off like a jet if motivated to do so. They can and they will. And yes, they can do it even with a post-op leg. When you're outside, choose a shady spot, or if your dog loves the sunshine, cover the post-op leg with a lightweight, light-colored sheet, towel, or blanket. This is to prevent sunburn. Now let's talk about things you can do inside. And I actually want to kind of diverge a little bit here um, because I think one of the mistakes we make as dog owners is we think the only way to tire out my dog is to take them to a dog park or play fetch, or run them, or go for a long hike, or doggy daycare, all that very physical stuff. And 
while those are great solutions for tiring dogs out, um, there, there's something else and it's brain games. This is a terrific way to tire out your furry friend and tackle the post-op flaws. Some options are food puzzles, lick mats, stuffed then frozen Kong toys, or interactive bed rest games. I want you to be careful if you're choosing super hard chew toys like antlers. And I say that because we see posts in the Facebook groups of dogs that crack their teeth and then have to go to the vet. So, you know, cha-ching, a lot more money there. So, and pain for your dog too. So we don't want that. Remember that calories from treats and food stuff toys count toward your dog's daily caloric intake. You can ask your veterinarian whether you should adjust food portions based on the number of treats and the types of treats you're giving. Number four, take notes about everything. Stress and sleep deprivation have a wacky way of clouding reality. Days will blend together. Confusion sets in. You'll say stuff like, hmm, did I give meds yet or was that yesterday? Uh, did I give tramadol or trazodone? When was it that they pooped? Was that this morning or yesterday? You know, like things start blending together and it gets thing, it gets really confusing. So rather than sweating it out, just write it down. You'll refer to your notes a lot. Be sure to write the date and time of each entry. Now, these are some things to write about. Peeing and pooping, weight bearing, medication issues, calls to the veterinary team, uh, team, and then what they said. Symptoms like fatigue, diarrhea, vomiting, inappetence. Of course, the list of possible symptoms is way more extensive than what I just mentioned. Um, incision healing, pain control, and whatever else you think is important. Don't consider chucking these notes when your veterinarian says, your dog is healed. And that's because if your furry friend is like most, they'll tear the opposite CCL, and then you're going to wish you had those notes. Number five, use your phone to track healing. Well, I couldn't think of that famous female photographer who takes portraits of movie stars, but I quickly recalled the name of a guy who's skilled with making movies. That said, channel your inner Spielberg and get the camera rolling. Take daily pictures of the incision. If it looks gooey, moist, ew, or if it looks like it's opening up or has pus, call the doctor right away. Better yet, send a couple of pictures. But here's the thing, guys. What good are blurry images? You know how to find focus your camera, right? You point the camera to the incision. Tap the center of the phone screen to set the focus and then get your pictures. Now, video is super helpful for things like tracking weight bearing. Noticing subtle gait improvement is a heck of a lot easier with slow motion video. As your dog walks, you're going to get some videos from the side and from behind too. Number six, when creating a recovery area, consider your dog's size, physicality, and temperament. If your dog has Schwarzenegger thighs, can jump like a thoroughbred, or can barrel through any obstacle like a 10-ton bulldozer, a rickety recovery area won't do. Your, so your dog's size, strength, and personality matter when creating a recovery area. If you're using a crate, make sure you've trained ahead of time. Make sure it's big enough. Consider the fact that the bigger the dog, the bigger the cone collar, and those things take up a ton of space. If your dog is not crate trained and that's what you want to use for post-op, Google search crate training techniques and begin training well in advance of surgery day. You want to do a positive kind of training. You know, getting upset and scolding your dog for not doing well with any of this training stuff is not going to help you post-op, so stay positive. Uh, dogs in our group who hate the crate and bust free suffer things like skin lacerations, painful broken teeth, and damage to their post-op legs, so be careful. You can also try an exercise pen or enclosure. These things come in plastic and metal options. Choose carefully. If you're thinking of using the back of your couch as a recover recovery area wall, 
know that athletic dogs can hurdle over them like Olympic athletes. And yeah, even with a terribly painful knee. My last point before moving to the next slide is about anxious dogs. These dogs do best when their recovery area is set up in a place where they usually hang out and so they can be with their people. Number seven, don't be afraid or ashamed to call your veterinarian. Now I remember saying this to myself, Carla, do not call again. You can't, you're being a nuisance. They're gonna hate you. They're gonna be so sick of you. They're gonna know your name. This is untrue, you guys. And that's why this slide is a goodie. It's so important that I wrote a little poem. Here we go. Oh, worried dog owners, hear my verse. With CCL surgery, healing comes first. So don't be afraid to reach out for aid. Just call your vet, your worries will fade. Mistakes can happen, we all have to learn. Recovery is a journey with twists and some turns. So don't be ashamed if you need a hand because your doc will understand. Say Fido got frisky and jumped from a height, bounding and running with all of his might. Don't panic, just call, it'll all be all right. Have confidence and don't be afraid. Vets guide us along until it's time to play. And before you know it, your dog will mend, wagging and playing until the day's end. There, now don't you feel better? All right, so here is the reveal. If you liked everything I, I just taught, I have something even better. I designed a step-by-step -step online course about preparation and recovery that you can do at home at your own pace, or you could even do it at work, I guess. <laughs> it's called CCL Recovery Made Easy. And I created the course because I know exactly what people worry about and the info they need to learn to have a successful recovery. As much as I love our Facebook group, I see new members joining and asking repeated questions and making similar and sometimes very serious and expensive mistakes. Every pet owner knows that when things go wrong, vet bills can quickly go from hundreds to thousands of dollars. And that's the last thing we need after this big expensive CCL bill. You'll get all the recovery info you need without having to scroll through hundreds of Facebook posts or doing exhaustive internet searches. So you can see that the regular course is 87 and that comes with 34 lessons and then five show what you know quizzes. And that'll just help you kind of see if you need to go back and brush up on any of the lessons. Um, the premium plan has some pretty awesome bonuses. And I'll show you those in the next slide. Um, so the, pre the bonuses are 14 done for you printable pages. There are sheets for keeping track of medications, note taking. There are five to do lists for each stage of recovery. Uh, there is a don't knock sign that you can print off and hang on doors. There are two different shopping lists, one for pet supply stores or Amazon, and then another for grocery stores. And there's a checklist that you can use to track your pet's pain. This comes in handy when you wanna have a discussion about pain control with your vet. And then there are two eBooks, a frozen Kong cookbook, which is super helpful to calm down Rami uh, bored post-op pups. And then another that is seven mistakes to avoid with, uh, for dogs with CCL tears. And this is an excellent book if you have to wait a while before surgery, or if you wanna take some precautions to protect the opposite CCL. No matter which uh, course you choose, each comes with a money back guarantee, 100%. And I'm so confident you're gonna love the course uh, because these people here that you see on this testimony slide, um, did the course and loved it. Um, you can pause this if you want so you can read more in depth. And I wanna thank you so much for taking the time and joining me today. Know that I'm wishing you and your dog the very best. I want you to keep your chin up and your eyes on the prize. You can do this. If you're interested in getting the course, you can visit runagainrover.com 
or I'll try putting a, a checkout link in the comments section below. Thanks so much, everyone.